Back in the very early days of Magic the Gathering, Kaya and Phil Folio were a husband and wife team of artists who left their mark on what later would turn out to be some of Magic's most iconic cards. To this day, even cards which did not go on to perform well in players' decks are still remembered and cherished due to the distinct technique and style that made Kaya and Phil's illustrations so illustrious, so memorable and lasting. Their contribution to the world of geekdom did not begin or end with Magic the Gathering, however, and the two have since gone on to distinguish themselves with the Hugo Award-winning comic series Girl Genius, not to mention adaptations of Another Fine Myth and the Buck Godot series. Long since having moved on from Magic the Gathering card art, for many Magic the Gathering players, the Folios are a legendary team of award-winning cartoonists whose past presence brings prestige and distinction to the early days of our game. For others, the bright cartoony style creates a tone often missing from the contemporary direction of the game, encapsulating whimsy and madcap delight in old cards such as Humility, Goblin King, Eureka, and Presence of the Master. And it's no wonder you can see the early inspiration that Phil Folio has said he drew both artistically and comedically from influential sources such as Dr. Seuss and classic Warner Brothers cartoons, while Kaya has spoken to her drive to find the interrelationships between contrasting elements of nerddom. Now the work of Phil and Kaya returns to Magic the Gathering through the amazing original Magic Art Store, where a limited time Kickstarter offers to bring playmats and prints of the duo's iconic work from their studio to your home. So this is really exciting because it's the first time since their departure from Magic back in 2004 that the Folios essentially return with the Folio Portfolio Project. This is a limited time Kickstarter for classic, never before available Magic the Gathering art prints and Playmats by Phil and Kaya Folio. Officially licensed limited edition stitched edge Magic the Gathering playmats, as well as both 12 by 16 open edition Glycy prints and 24 by 30 limited edition Glycy prints, and of course all items signed by the artist that created the original artwork. So I've talked in the past that offering grades for things like prints is really subjective, as it simply comes down to whether you personally want that artwork on your wall. With stitched playmats, however, there are some factors we can critically look at. So I asked the Folio Project if they could send some evaluation samples, which I have right here. Let's take a look. As I have discussed in previous videos, the main factor with stitched mats is whether your cards can slide comfortably on and off the mat without catching along the edges. Older viewers will remember older reviews of certain brands of stitched edge play mats where the cards caught, risking potential damage, and at the very least, offering a less than exemplary playing experience. So the Folio Project uses the new Ultra Pro style of stitched mat, which I have not previously reviewed. As you can see, whether sleeved or unsleeved, the stitched edge does not appear to offer any interference with your cards. The stitching itself is very uniform, and I see no unnecessary overlap or loose threading. The idea of a stitched mat, besides any aesthetic appreciation the owner may have for the style, is to help ensure longevity of the mat itself through combating the fraying of the playmat's edges. And so it looks like the Ultra Pro technique for stitched mats is checking all the boxes. Excellent. Also, I must say that in a world so often dominated by play mats featuring only the newest art of the newest sets, newest planeswalkers, or mythics, being able to have a Goblin King play mat, or Eureka play mat, or Spirit Link, or Humility, or Mishra's Workshop is rather delightful, especially if I am playing with my treasured non standard deck. 
The Glycy prints are the high standard you'd expect from the OMA store. If you've seen shots of my office, you know I love Magic the Gathering art prints. For me, it's as close as I can ever come to owning an original piece of Magic art. And thankfully, it's a mere fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the cost of owning such a piece. They look absolutely stunning in person. I can show off and enjoy the art of Magic the Gathering that excites and engages me. And seriously, when I took these samples out of the shipping package, my wife, unaware of the specifics of this video, asked out loud, wait, those aren't real, are they? Uh, no, they're not, but they're as close as I'll ever get to having the real thing on my wall. I'll include links to the Folio Kickstarter in this video's description. And everything you get, whether print or playmat, is signed by the artist, which is really cool too. Oh, just look at that. If you remember playing with one of these, you're, you're probably old. There's international shipping available and it uses a fulfillment company to help reduce that cost of international shipping. And that's really nice for viewers outside the USA as, for example, Australian customers can get a play mat and only pay, say, $10 in shipping compared to, say, $25 or more from more normal channels. So whether you plan to pick up a print or a play mat or not, or just log on and read the latest girl genius from Phil and Kaya Folio. I hope very much this video has been of some interest to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. What old Magic the Gathering artist from the early days is your favorite and why? What piece of artwork would you love to hang on your walls? Let me know in the comments below. documentation that you run Sensei's Divining Top and Paradox Engine in every deck, regardless of Commander. Oh, come on, that combo is solid. Paradox Engine is an artifact, so it's fine to run a copy in every single Commander deck, right? Wrong. wrong. Right. I mean, wrong, totally wrong. Egregious, terrible, very super wrong. Mr. Professor, don't you run Tangle Wire? It's not banned, so yeah, I run it. Does it have a point, a purpose in your deck? It slows my opponents down while I, uh, while I... Well, you what? Well, it slows them down.